Okay, what we're going to do in the next video is derive a really long equation, but this equation uses five assumptions. I'm going to go through the assumptions one by one. So firstly, we're going to assume that the molecules are point molecules. In other words, the volume that the molecules actually take up is negligible compared to the volume of the gas itself. So normally if I draw the particles like this, the problem with drawing the particles like this is that they can't be on top of each other like this. You can see they can't have be on top of like that, so that makes our calculations much more difficult. So instead of treating them as big particles like that, we treat them as point particles like this, which makes our calculations easier. The second assumption is that the particles do not have any force of attraction between each other. So for example, normally there are force of attraction, these intermolecular forces between each particle. But in, in an ideal gas, we have to ignore this. Okay, so there's none of that. So we also know that internal energy for the ideal gas or anything is kinetic energy, which is due to the motion movement of the particles and potential energy, which is due to the force of attraction between the particles. So these particles are still moving, so they still have kinetic energy, but there's no more force of attraction between the particles. Uh, for an ideal gas, so we don't have any potential energy. So for an ideal gas, the internal energy is the kinetic energy. Okay, the third assumption is that the particles are moving around randomly, so they equally likely go in the x direction, the y direction, or the z direction. Uh, and also that there's enough particles for us to apply statistics, meaning that the average velocity in the x direction, y direction, or z direction is the same. The fourth assumption is that the collision between the particles and the wall is elastic, meaning if it collides the wall with the momentum of mv, it won't lose any of that kinetic energy, so rebound with minus mv momentum. So the change in momentum will be minus 2mv. The final assumption is that each collision with the container is much shorter duration than the time between the impacts. This is due to this equation that we'll be using. Force equal to rate of change in momentum. So change in momentum over time taken. Now this time taken really should be the time the particle is in contact with the wall of the container. So in other words, when it's bouncing off like that. But that's too difficult. So instead what we use is the time it takes for the uh, particle to hit one wall bounce off, hit the other wall and come back. Basically the time it takes to travel two times the length of the container. So this makes our calculations much easier, which is why we make this assumption.